Dave Palumbo here for another RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review. Today we have a very special guest here who's going to talk about his own unique theory on what causes calcium buildup in our arteries as we get older. Conventional therapies, you know, can be detected by, you know, scans like cardiac or CT calcium scores. And a lot of bodybuilders have reached out to me recently in the, in the, I guess, light of a lot of the bodybuilding deaths we've seen in the industry. And they've been telling me, hey, I got these very high calcium scores. Um, what does that mean? How can I reverse it? Well, I did a little research and a couple of people pointed me to our next guest's um, website. And I was intrigued by his new theory and I wanted to get him here today. And the man I'm talking about is Dr. Gary Mizos. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, uh, my uh, voice uh, coming through loud and clear. You okay are. For it? It's going to come through so loud and clear. People's whole body is going to be shaking pretty soon when you talk <laughs> about what you've, you know, discovered all the years. Give us a little Most bit of your background. Excellent. Pardon me. Well, uh, I did family practice and emergency medicine for uh, almost twenty-eight years. Um, mm -hmm. At the twenty-two-year point, I. Uh, got a first calcium score on myself mm -hmm. and um, my score was 720. Wow, explain what that is. The, explain to our audience what a cardiac well, CT calcium it, score is. It, 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 it's using an ultra fast CAT scan uh, to measure uh, the amount of calcification in coronary artery plaque. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this calcium score represents roughly 10% of the total plaque volume, gotcha. according to Matthew Budoff at UCLA and, and the MESA study. So um, it's relevant, it's accurate, uh, and it, it means a lot. Uh, it means that if your score is above zero, you have, are at risk of having a heart attack. Right. Now, this is all... Um, it's logarithmically bad. <laughs> so so uh, a score of zero yeah. is perfect. Uh, and um, it builds upon, calcification builds upon itself uh, and increases at the rate of 35 to 55% per year. Wow. Now, I have a zero score when I went for my calcium score, but I know people that have 700. I know someone came back and told me they had 4,000. Why would one person have a higher calcium score than another, conventionally speaking? What, what is their explanation in the textbooks for that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is an endo endovascular conundrum. Yes. Uh, why? Well, yeah. that's just great. Uh, you can't really answer that. And okay. uh, there are so many variables. Uh, it's your body habitus, your body lifestyle, what do you eat, what you right. drink, uh, your genetic makeup, uh, what your hemoglobin A1C is, uh, your APOE1 uh, cholesterol process, everything matters. Right. And so it just is what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, genetics, obviously, uh, big, big, yeah. right? Pardon Genetics me? seem to play a big role too. You know, if you it's a fam, if you have a family history of that it seems to be passed down from generation to generation, right? Uh, yes. The predisposition. Some... The predisposition. Yeah. Absolutely, in that regard, yes. Um, so, um, at any rate, let me let me rewind. I'm, I promise I'm going to get to that. Okay. But historically, I think this is really important for sure. our ultimate um, edification, if you will. Um, my score was 720, and most of it was in my left anterior descending coronary artery. This was in 90, late 95, 96, mm. okay? And um, when I was a child, uh, I was in the hospital room visiting my gra paternal grandfather uh, when he had a heart attack and died in front of me. Oof. I was the only person in the room wow. except him. Well, that was impressive, to say the least. Um, then, you know, his son, my father, uh, started having cardiac episodes 
uh, without much warning. So he didn't have a lot of chest pain, mm -hmm. didn't have a lot of short of breath. He just got really tired when he was carrying logs out of the woods to chop wood for right. the fireplace and stuff. And so at any rate, I, I did an EKG and when he visited my office and lo and behold, he had ischemia in all of his cardiac leads. Uh, and uh, I sent him for his first bypass and I actually scrubbed in for that surgery. Wow. And uh, that was impressive to seeing your dad open like a catfish. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Impressive. I don't know many people that could do that. I mean, I, it would be tough. I would think, you know, to watch that. Well, you know, I, you know, medical. You 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 learn to just tolerate almost anything. Right. You know. Um, yeah. So anyway, a couple of years later, he needed another bypass, and he got it. And uh, another few more years, he needed another bypass. And he said, oh, no, 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 it hurts too bad. I'll die first. And he did. Um, wow. And so he was only 60. Oh, terrible. Yeah. So <clears throat> my finding out that I have coronary artery disease, yeah. uh, I didn't realize, I didn't think I was going to live very long. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was very troublesome. You know, and 720 is like the handwriting's on the wall. You could drop dead any time. Sure, and you were still you're very okay. young at that point, yeah. Huh? You were still in your no. 50, early 50s, right? Yeah. So anyway, um, I, uh, I, I mulled that around, you know, and it had bothered me. One night, I just, you know, I thought, wow, you know, I think I know what I can really do to reverse coronary artery disease. Uh, and I sat down and I wrote a formula down mm -hmm. of what I thought it would take. Right. And where did this come from? Was uh, it divinely inspired or was it like something that you had been thinking about for quite a while? Well, I just, I think it was probably a little divine intervention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, why me, right? Right. Well, it just came to you is what you're saying. It wasn't like something you had been researching for, for years and years and years, right? No. No, no. It was, it was I was um, inspired, mm -hmm. let's say. Okay. And my intellect, uh, as far as, you know, microbiology and physiology uh, and biochemistry, I've, it's always been easy for me. Okay. Medicine's already, always been easy for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm like a walking textbook, <laughs> and uh, literally, I have virtually total recall. Oh, wow. I mean, I can remember reading my dad's medical books when I was like four years old. Wow, really? Oh, so you have a photographic there, memory then. I can, I can close my eyes and see the, the illustrations Wow. today. Wow. It's 71. So, That's okay. crazy. Anyway, my point is, um, I thought about this and I, I had a compounding pharmacist put my formula together for me. Mm -hmm. And I was my first guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it worked. You reversed it. it. Uh, my follow up, um, I couldn't get uh, the uh, radiologist to do it any sooner than a year, but uh, I continued with my formula, and uh, my subsequent CAC score was zero. Wow. So you went from 700 to zero? Yeah. Okay. Less than a year. Wow. Um, it's still zero. Amazing. Do you still take the formula, or did you just have to take it that yes. once? Every night. My wife, uh, apparently, she likes me still. Uh, and so <laughs> she, uh, she puts eight capsules of my Nanobac TX formula in a little bowl by my sink yeah. every night. Yeah. And she watches me take them. Oh, to make sure you don't forget. I got you. Yeah. So, so there's no cheating. <laughs> you can remember the textbooks from four years old, but you might forget to take those pills, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. What, so so, so uh, what was in the, what's in the formula? That, that, what, what, what's the solution, I guess you could say? What, what did you find out? What was, what was <clears throat> the revelation? Well, you know, plaque uh, 
consists of um, it's not in the line, not in the lumen of a blood vessel. Okay. It's actually builds up in the interior layers of the arterial wall itself. Right. So um, there's a a endothelium, then there's the entomal layer, then there's a medial layer. Mm. Now the entomal medial space is where plaque develops gotcha so it's un- okay. if, you, if you think of the, like if you i think you had this on your website if you think of the blood vessels as a hose it would be inside the the rubber part of the hose yeah it's not on, it's not on the inside of the hose it's it's actually in no. the the rubber wall of the hose correct okay correct correct and plaque tends to accumulate um where there are bifurcations and splits in the blood vessels and, you know, the joints, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And we believe that the uh, fluid dynamics, because of blood flow, you get a vortex and uh, a little bit of spinning. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so that has a tendency to um, make irritation uh, or a little less covered space Mm -hmm. uh, in the lining of the endothelium so that things uh, or nanobacteria specifically, Mm -hmm. uh, which are 20 to 200 nanometers in size, um, they move in and out of our body spaces. They're in our blood supply uh, and they can enter that intimal medial space through the wall wow. uh, because they're size and small, okay? So now, uh, let, let, I, get, I, get, I want to that. stop you for one second. I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I just want our audience to follow along. Nanobacteria, how are they different from normal sure. bacteria and how long have we known about nanobacteria? Well, um, one of my um, researchers, uh, Dr. Kajander in Finland, uh, Kuopio, Finland, I. Uh, I bought their company in uh, in Finland and used that as our research gotcha. uh, primary research for elect- access to the university's uh, electron microscopy departments and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, he he was doing a postdoctoral. He's an MD PhD, a full professor at the university there in Finland. But he was doing a postdoctoral research uh, mm-hmm. at Scripps in California. University of California, San Diego, and uh, under Den- Dennis Carson, and and his um, he was doing cell um, cultures, and one of the problems with cell cultures is that they die. Mm-hmm. They just all of a sudden they'll be nice and healthy, and then boom, they're they're all dead. Okay. Okay. Well, so now you got to start all over again. Right. And then it continues and continues. Well, he got, at a period of frustration, he um, he just put them back in the incubator and forgot about it, you know. And he looked, and you know, four or five months later, he sees that his culture plates have uh, a film on them mm-hmm. that's clearly visible, and it's calcific. Hmm. Interesting. What what's this? You know. So he investigated, he discovered these 20 nanometer to uh, 200 nanometer structures uh, that replicated uh, and you couldn't see them in a regular culture medium. Mm -hmm. And it took apparently, you know, know, four, five months just to get a good culture. Wow. So they they grow slower than normal than we would use in a clinical laboratory and a a regular standard clinical microscope goes to like a thousand times visual um that's won't see them wow so So you're like almost like this they're almost micro they're there you can't see them even with a regular microscope so people just didn't know they were there is what you're saying yeah that's you. exactly correct. So, uh, at any rate, he discovered nanobacteria. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, you know, they were super small. They didn't have enough um, genetic material, DNA, RNA, mRNA, to meet 
the standard definition of life. So he proposed that they were a new form of life. Interesting. That has been gone. I mean, it's always been around. Right. Uh, but was previously not studied or not discovered. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at any rate, nanobacteria uh, have some very unique properties. Um, they have two forms of replication. They bud, and then they use um, standard meiotic, mitotic right. uh, growth structures like, like a cell would mm. uh, or another living thing. But then they also bud, and mm. kind of like a coral reef. Uh, and so they produce calcium. They use calcium from the bloodstream mm -hmm. or the environment mm -hmm. uh, to make a biofilm. The biofilm uh, will cause inflammation in our bodies. Right. Uh, and um, calcification, ultimately. Mm -hmm. uh, they grow up, they grow like a coral reef. Wow. They definitely... Uh, are found, uh, our researchers at Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, um, Stanford, uh, I mean, we are, we've had researchers collaborate with us worldwide. All of these uh, descriptions of nanobacteria have been uh, repeated in over and over different places. Right. Uh, but we do know that you can isolate nanobacteria from coronary artery plaque, Wow. Uh, whenever you find pathological calcification mm -hmm. in a human, mm -hmm. it's nanobacteria. Wow. So they're building almost like barnacles or like you said, coral reefs. They're growing inside these vessels. Correct. So imagine, look at the end of a tube and call it the artery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So nanobacteria, let's just say that at a juncture, um, uh, at a splitting off wherever the left anterior descending coronary artery leaves the aorta, okay? Right. Um, that, that's where you're going to get this vortex of spinning, okay? And mm -hmm. micro erosion from fluid dynamics on the endothelium mm -hmm. space on the inner lining of the artery, right. all right? That's where you're going to find the nanobacteria. They're able to enter that because of those unique fluid dynamics at that space, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. So once they get into that intimal medial space, they have a biofilm that causes inflammation. Right. Now, our body reacts to inflammation by trying to isolate the inflammation. Sure. If you have a pimple on your face, that's an infection. If you leave it alone, uh, your body will ultimate, for example, just try to isolate it, build a system wall around it, and maybe it will pop. Yes. Okay. That's an important thought process. So the nanobacteria, once they're in that intimal medial space of the coronary artery, they're causing inflammation. The body can't see what's causing it but there is an inflammatory cascade. Mm -hmm. So what it tries to do is wall off the area sure. with soft plaque. Interesting. Now, nanobacteria use VLDL cholesterol mm -hmm. and HDL cholesterol uh, and LDL cholesterol to use as their food stuff. Interesting. So when you look at plaque volume, um, what you'll find is oxidized cholesterols. Now that's because the nanobacteria actually oxidized it. Wow. Okay. So that's okay. why, is that why some people could eat a high cholesterol diet and it doesn't affect them whatsoever because they don't have these nanobacteria possibly in their bodies? Mm, that, that may be a, a little bit too much of a push. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's a broad statement that's yeah. way too broad. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So get back to the uh, the walling off, yeah. Yeah, let's go back to the yeah. walling off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so once the nanobacteria uh, have been walled off, and you know, I mean, nanobacteria can cause apoptosis or cell death. death. Right. Uh, they enter the uh, nucleus of our cells. They interrupt RNA and DNA replication, and they kill the cell. 
Wow. Okay, so our cells, uh, as part of an immune system, we have fibroblasts and T cells, etc., for uh, fight our immune battles. Mm -hmm. Well, they kill them. Oh, wow. And so ultimately, we win. Okay, and the nanobacteria get walled off. So now you've got the calcification uh, and you've got soft plaque detritus, dead cells, you know, oxidized cholesterol, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All this detritus uh, is there yeah. and it goes kind of dormant, but you actually have the plaque. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't get resorbed. Not mm -hmm. at all. Right. So after a while, maybe normally like a year or two, your body will try to resorb it and it thinks that everything's calm and fine. Well, it's not. The nanobacteria have continued to grow and replicate upon themselves in a budding fashion. Uh, they're not dead. Uh, they're continuing to grow and calcify and increase the calcification. Interesting. After a while, though, our body thinks that uh, it's, everything's normal. Let's normalize this area. Mm -hmm. So it does when, like, it tries to, you know, if you had a cyst on your arm, whatever it looks like in two years, your body has already tried to make it smaller and normalize mm -hmm. the area. Well, what happens is your body tries to build nanotubules into that plaque okay. area that supplies the body supplies now serum from the bloodstream okay, okay. nanobacteria are going to get their food again oh boy okay so they're going to get the cholesterols and they're going to get that so now what they're trying to do they'll make that biofilm again and the inflammatory process starts all over again. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So this waxing and waning and waxing and waning inflammatory cascade that's occurring in your blood vessel walls, uh, ultimately, uh, what will happen is at some point, it will narrow the blood vessel opening. Right. Okay. Uh, and the, the swelling uh, will protrude into the lumen of the blood vessel. Right. And imagine a pimple. Right. And it pops. Oh, yeah. That's called a plaque fracture. Mm -hmm. It spews detritus uh, and plaque into the lumen of the blood vessel. Right. That causes an immediate clotting cascade. Sure. And if it happens in your left anterior descending, you die. Yeah, <laughs> you're dead. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Gotcha. So, so um, the Nanobac TX that I invented actually maintains serum EDTA levels, which is a chelating agent, right? Of, right. Hmm? EDTA me? being is a chelating agent that what binds up like calcium. Well, uh, the EDTA that is there to denude the calcification from the nanobacteria. To take it away, to remove the calcification. Correct. Right, and unroof them. Gotcha. Okay. Well, my website is uh, nanobiotechpharma.com, okay? Uh, the quick version is nanobactx.com. Right. And, and there's a lot more information there and published clinical trials and studies for people to read to get into more detail. I mean, I can talk to the, about this for days. <laughs> this is super interesting. So you've created a pill or, or some kind of a ability for the body to remove the calcium. What happens when you take that calcium away from that plaque? Uh, well, the nanobacteria then are exposed and denuded from their calcium. Mm. The enzyme systems in my nanobacteria then mm. dissolve the nanobacteria. 
What enzymes are those? Are they, are they, are they well known, or is this like a proprietary formula? Yeah. Okay. It is. Okay. Uh, All right. So, you're, so there's uh, enzymes that will dissolve this plaque. Now, what kills the bacteria? Well, once once the enzymes uh, have dissolved the nanobacteria, that's it. They're, oh, okay. they're gone. So the enzymes will actually kill the bacteria as well, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. And what's to prevent? So, so I guess the reason why you're continuing to take this is because you must have a predisposition to for these bacteria in your bodies to lay themselves down, so you stay on it constantly. Is that the idea? Uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, or my wife ensures that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about for other uh, people? You, I mean, you've treated a lot of people with this this, this therapy. What is the normal? Well, we, I, I invented this in '97. Right. Okay. So it's been a 20-year journey fighting surgeons, invasive yeah. cardiologists, <laughs> educating uh, chiropractic physicians, right. cardiologists, family practice people, PAs, NPs, uh, anybody that will basically listen. Uh, you know, listen. And you know, there have been several books written about this, uh, about us. One of them is uh, has heart disease been cured, right. um, and that version of that book uh, that the FDA was not pleased to. Hear I'm that. sure. Uh, so, <laughs> they, they, so they're taking they away their drugs right. from them. You don't want to take the drugs away from these guys. They they get mad about that, right? You know, actually, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, do you need a prescription for this medication, or that you just buy it directly from you? Uh, actually, you get it on the website. Okay. Um, and we have physicians, uh, cardiologists, yeah. I mean, uh, all over the world that uh, literally, I mean, they stock it in their offices mm -hmm. uh, and, and they sell it to their patients or you can get it online. It's not does not require. Okay. Uh, a prescription. You know. Now, normally a person would take Nanobac TX probably for about a year. Right. Uh, and and reassess, you know, so we have, uh, one of the ways you can, uh, assess your cardiac status non-invasively, mm. uh, is a, a CAC score, of course. Calcium so score. you're, you're monitoring just the calcification at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, but that comprises 10% of total plaque volume. Right. But that is the nanobacteria though, too. Mm-hmm. So w okay. when you when you just uh, I want you to clarify something for people when they go when people go for a cardiac or a CT calcium score versus a cardiac CT scan or cardiac CT angiogram they call it, what is the difference between those to explain that to people? Well, you know the CAC score is a very quick. It takes right. like you hold your one breath and it's done. Yeah. Okay. So what they're doing is they're not trying to image all of the structures in your chest and it doesn't you know it's just looking at the coronary arteries uh and then the machine can read you know it's gated so it hits on a certain amount uh a certain place in your ekg mm -hmm. um it's very brief it's a screening test gotcha um when it when we first uh, came out with it um you know it just it was it was not even a prescription. So I mean, we had people uh, driving around in semi track <laughs> trailers and going to churches. Oh, and really? Doing wow. EAC scores. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. On people, uh, one of my uh, friends' um, acquaintances of, and a, a while a patient um, was a billionaire, and uh, so he started a um, a mobile CT. You know, CAC score testing. He had right. seven of them. And he was all over, driving them all over the place. Right. But anyway, um, the radiologists wanted to regulate that, okay? Gotcha. And they wanted to be able to read it. And they wanted to be able to charge for it themselves. Gotcha, gotcha. And the hospitals got a little bit upset too. <laughs> hey, you've got CAT scans. They've got machines in semis better than our stuff <laughs> in the hospital. And you're not charging for it? What? Yeah. I don't get anything? Well, okay. So now it's regulated. Gotcha. Uh, and, you know, it has to be done uh, either in a, 
an independent radiology facility mm -hmm. uh, or a hospital. Right. Gotcha. Okay. The mobile aspect, well, they took that away. <laughs> of course, too easy. They don't want to make it too easy for you. What, when you get it, if you so get... There's, there's the other thing that you were talking about, the CT angiography. Right. Now, the CT angiography is a full-blown, computer-generated masterpiece. Yes. And literally, uh, it's absolutely amazing. But that involves, you know, the use of... Um, you know, dyes and an IV and mm -hmm. it takes about 45 minutes and et cetera. That's a big deal. That's a clinical diagnostic test. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, if someone comes to you and says, uh, doc, I, I got a, uh, my calcium score came back. It's, it's 2000 or, th you know, which is very high, obviously. Can your therapy help a person who's that bad as opposed, just as well as it could help someone who's got like a 500 calcium score? Of course. And it works the same way, essentially. Does it take longer yes. to get rid of the plaque or no? Of course. Okay. You know, it's not like, you know, uh, shooting a buffalo in the head with a gun. <laughs> head. No, 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 no. This takes time. Right. This is, you know, people are like, oh, well, that's calcification. Does something break off and I'm at yeah. risk of a. No. It's a very slow chemical dissolution process gotcha. okay now it depends on the size of the plaque it depends on the density of the plaque right it depends on the blood flow in the area of the plaque mm. so um you know imagine i i you know granite for example um is hard Everybody knows that granite is dense sure. and hard, right? So, I mean, but wa water can wear granite away. Yeah, over time. Right? Right, right? It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, Sure. right? Okay, but now sandstone, oh, it's much softer. It's not as dense. And so it will wear away much faster than the granite. Right. So... All of these factors depend, you know, how bad are you? Right. But it's not a matter of whether it will work or not. It's a matter of when you will get your desired outcome. Right, right. Now, I mean, when you see, when I see people prescribing statins, okay, uh, which lower cholesterol, I see people like trying to put a Band-Aid on something that's, or stopping one aspect that's really not having anything to do with the etiology of what's being, what's causing this plaque. Is, it, is that correct, that statement? Correct. Okay. So you're really not solving the problem. Now, listen, I mean, you know, the, you know, there's just, there's one company yeah. that's kind of big in the United States that makes $80 billion <laughs> on one little thing of their little pills. Right. Okay. Now, if, I do something to affect that <laughs> I know, market right. share over this quarter. <laughs> right. They're going to hit, find me and hit me with a bus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that statins increase calcification. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. It's really? published. Wow. They know it. Okay. Oh, my God. The mechanism of action of why it does, I'm not going to get into, um, but I don't take statins. <laughs> right. Well, it seems your solution seems like it's actually I'm something. I'm 71 years old and I don't take statins. Yeah, okay? yeah. Your solution sounds like it's addressing how to reverse this because a lot of the medications that are being prescribed are not reversing anything. They're kind of trying to just create like a stop things it's from progressing, palliative. right? No, it's it's not even that. It's palliative. They're treating blood tests. Gotcha. Oh, I see. That okay. are irrelevant. Right, right, right. You know, we're, heart disease is not a cholesterol problem. Yeah. It's an inflammatory problem. Interesting, interesting, yeah. So your cholesterol levels, unless you really got something bad yeah. going on. Right is not your problem. Yeah. 
Okay. I, I tend to agree with that because I see people with, with very, very just slightly elevated LDLs and they have terrible coronary artery disease. And you see other people, you know, that have nothing. And you know, so it's, it does, you're right. There's no consistency. There's no like cause effect type of uh, going on here. Right. Uh, the people that make statins uh, would love to have statins in kids' cereal. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right with that. <laughs> uh, uh, it what? was actually proposed. It was actually proposed. No, are you kidding me? Like putting fluoride in the water? I, oh, I'm my not, God. Oh, I'm not kidding. Mad. I'm not kidding. Jeez. All right. So anyway, um, let's go back to the tests. Okay. So what should you do uh, as a, a bodybuilder yes. or a physique uh, artist mm. or whatever you want to call it? whatever you like to do mm -hmm. i i'm sure your audience will knows what i mean yes okay um you need to get a cac score done absolutely all right now you're you might have to pick a few doctors to um to get that prescription ordered yeah. all right it requires a prescription yes um the average Joe physician doesn't know why you would want to get a CAC score done. <laughs> like you said, it's the, it's the easiest I'm, I'm, test of all. It's the most, it's the most, it gives you so scary. much information, this test, you know. God forbid uh, we prevent a heart attack, right? Let's just treat it after well, it happens. Look, you know, first of all, let's see what's, what's there. Yeah. Duh. Is it in the zero? Okay, well, cool. I mean, that's yeah, great. Right. That means you're you're probably good for maybe ten years, mm, right? All right. But if it's not zero, mm -hmm. there are gradations. You know, zero to a hundred is minimal. A uh, hundred to four hundred uh, is mm, that's you got to start paying attention to this. Mm. Four hundred and up, okay, is a level that you're at the highest risk of having a heart attack or a stroke mm -hmm. in the next year. Wow. Oh, my God. Years. Okay. Jeez. Yeah. So, um, and a score of 100 in the LAD, mm -hmm. which is the left anterior descending coronary artery, it uh, is called the widow maker. <laughs> sure. And if it occludes, you're out of here. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We had a bodybuilder. So, um, that's why you need to know. You want to know what your risk is. Test. Don't guess. Yeah. Now, if you even if you have a low, let's say you get something that's not zero, but you're, you're low. You're like a hundred. I would still think well, that you your get, that your formula would. Yeah, but I would still think your formula would still be good. I don't want to have anything in my vessels, right? That's correct. That's you know right. You want you want to take it until it's zero. Right. That's it. Now, additionally, there's another test that you can do, okay? Uh, it's called carotid intimal medial thickness test. Mm -hmm. It's done with an ultrasound. There's no x-rays. Right. It's, it's no big deal, okay? Uh, you can, your doctor can order that. But you don't want just a regular carotid ultrasound done at your church yeah. as part of a screening test, sure. okay? That won't give you any information mm -hmm. specifically. It will say, oh, you've got a lot of plaque. Okay, well, that's wonderful. Right. But that's not good enough. So you need a carotid intimal medial thickness test. Okay. Now, that will tell you uh, what your risk is associated with it. Okay. And so a certain amount of plaque in your carotids has already been determined to be present in most people at a certain age, mm -hmm. okay? So you could be uh, 55 years old and have the carotids and plaque of an 80-year-old. Wow. It's a very accurate test mm -hmm. these days. All right? there... So that's why you need... Not just a carotid ultrasound. Gotcha. You need the carotid intimal medial thickness, C-I-M-T okay. test. That's, okay. I'm glad that's something that I never told people about. That's a great thing. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that this whole theory of, or this whole cascade you've been discussing about the plaque laying down and the calcium 
caused by the nanobacteria. Can that happen in your brain? And if it does, is that possibly what, why people are getting dementia when they get older? Uh, atherosclerosis, which is the process of plaque development, happens head to toe. Wow. Okay. One of the first things that calcifies in your cranium, in your head, mm -hmm. uh, is the pineal gland. Right, right, where melatonin is produced. Uh, so back in the early days when I was doing some research to evaluate um, nanobacteriax and its efficacy, mm -hmm. um, what I did is I said, talked to my radiologist buddy and I said, I want you to call in somebody that you know <laughs> that you you've tested yeah. that you've done a brain scan on them or you've done a, a CT of their head. Right. And I, I want somebody, a couple of people that, um, you know, have calcified pineal glands. Right. Okay. So he got them. Uh, and so what I said, okay, but well now what I want you to do is, uh, call me in while they're sitting there and we'll talk uh, a little bit and I'm going to tell them what I want to do. Okay. First of all, we wanted to get a CAT scan of their head. Mm -hmm. All right. Baseline. Uh, and do a CAC score on their pineal gland. Wow. You can do that. We did. No one had ever done that before. Cool. Uh, I said, but what we, we, we did is we were able to score and quantify the right. amount of a amount of calcification in their pineal glands. Right. So <clears throat> then we treated them with nanobacteriax for six months. Right. And then we repeated it. Well, uh, the only thing that we changed is that we added nanobacteriax to them. Right. Okay. They didn't change their medicines. They didn't change anything. Didn't change their uh, diet. Right. They didn't start jogging. Right, right. Whatever. Nothing. All right. So their pineal glands were now decalcified. Wow. That's crazy. And, yeah. I'd um, like to see what you, that, you ever... The most important part of right. that was we proved that we're able to transcend what is known as the blood brain barrier. Right. It passes across. We, our nanobacteriax was going into their brain. That's awesome. And making it better. Wow. Do you think that, um, oh. do you think that questions, have you ever tried it with people who are suffering from, you know, dementia at all to see if that would help? <laughs> Am I leading on to the next, to the next question? There you go. <laughs> Here it is. Take the well, ball. Uh, Run. <laughs> now look, <clears throat> um, the editor in chief of the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, mm -hmm. George Perry, uh, PhD, uh, is the Dean of Science and University of Texas, San Antonio, also. He's also on my medical advisory committee, and he's drawn up plans for us to do a, an Alzheimer's study on nanobacteriax. Wow. Okay? That's awesome. Right. Now, uh, we just need a couple of extra million we're not doing anything with right. to, to do this. <laughs> but he, uh, he can assure us that it will be published. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the only reason that we would be doing that test is because I already have reports of people getting better. Really? Oh, my God. That's, that's phenomenal. Not just a little bit better. Right. A lot better. Wow. And even late stages. Yeah. Better. Wow. That, that's an, I think that's, that's the scariest thing for a lot of people. That's the scariest thing for me. I, I know that I, you know, I saw my father, you know, when he got into his late eighties, really losing his memory. And it really bothered me because I'm like, is that going to be my fate too? You know, I take such good care of myself. I eat right. I train, I work out, I stay, keep my body fat. You know, I do everything. I take my vitamins, but dementia seems to be something that we haven't been able to really, you know, figure out and, it makes sense that if, you know, right? Well, it's atherosclerosis. Right. Okay. The amyloid plaque that accumulates in the brain. Right. And tau uh, that accumulates in the brain is the same amyloid 
that is involved in our repair process for endovascular injuries, wow. et cetera. It's the same thing. That's crazy. That's right? amazing. So if it works in your coronary arteries right. and your carotids, it will work in your brain as well. That's amazing. I, I, what you're I, doing is revolutionary, really. It is. I'm sure you're fighting a lot well, of like, you know, battles, but. It, you know. <laughs> well, we've. Let's just put. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a tough road to hoe. Yeah. I'm glad you're doing it, though. <laughs> I'm really glad you're doing it because you know what? A lot of people wouldn't do it because they don't want to, you know, they don't want to rattle the boat, you know, that kind of thing. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I get Dr. Gary, I really appreciate you coming on here. Number one, in educating us, because I think the education was invaluable. And I think a lot of people now who work out and watch this show are going to go and get their cardiac uh, calcium scores done because it is well, important. Let me, yeah. let me interrupt. Yeah. That's not your first step. What's the first step? The first step is to go to nanobiotechpharma.com. Okay. Or nanobactx.com. Right. Get started. Read it. Get started. Get some nanobactx. Start using it. Really? Okay. You can go to find a doctor that'll order a scan for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? Luckily, in the bodybuilding community, we all have, we do know doctors who are progressive thinking and they are prescribing these cardiac uh, calcium scores much more, uh, I guess, easily. But you're right. There are doctors that just won't do it. They think, ah, you don't need it. You're, you know, you're not old enough. You don't have any problems. You know, uh, don't worry about it. But I think more doctors are prescribing this cardiac CT calcium scores nowadays. Well, and it should. They should be. Yeah, yeah. They should be. I'm going to buy some stuff. I don't even, I don't have any plaques in my coronary arteries, but who knows? Maybe in my brain I do. You do have, I can promise you. Yeah. You do have plaque you think you've so? lived long enough and you've abused yourself <laughs> yeah. enough to have some plaque <laughs> yeah but you don't you want to get rid of it yeah yeah you don't want it amazing amazing information thank you so much for joining us dr gary uh it was my pleasure you know you you were so easy to work with and you really explained this so simplistically i think anyone could understand it now and it makes such it you know what i always say that the most complex problems always have the simplest solutions and it seems like we make things more complicated than they need to be. You completely simplified the whole process here. Well, coronary artery disease, heart disease, vascular disease, whether it's in your legs, your brain, uh, in your chest, wherever, it's an inflammatory problem. Right. And it is secondary to a smoldering, lifelong infectious process. Yeah. That's what it seems like. And it can be reversed. Right. What do you think about this EPA? I was reading studies about EPA oil, pure EPA oil, 2,000 milligrams per day, helping to reverse plaque formation. What do you know about that? It doesn't work. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's been some studies. My cardiologist had mentioned it to me because he said he had read a couple studies on that. Uh -huh. <laughs> As he rolls his yeah. eyes. <laughs> uh, Don't get sure. your, your nano back TX. There you go. Um, All right. So uh, I'll be more than happy to come on uh, your show uh, yeah. and help educate your, your clientele, uh -huh. followers, uh, anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us and thank you for taking time. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show because this was a lot of information. Process it. Go to the website, check it out, get your cardiac calcium scores done. I'm Dave Palumbo with Dr. Gary Mizo. We'll see you next time.